Ties in baseball. It almost sounds wrong, doesn't it? Baseball games just aren't supposed to end in a tie. There's something about the philosophy of the game and those who play it that just won't allow that to happen. Teams are meant to play, on and on, until one finally comes out on top, right? Well, apparently, nobody told Asia. Nippon Professional Baseball, the Korean Baseball Organization, and the Chinese Professional Baseball League all operate on a 12-inning tie rule. Prior to the hard inning cap, it was usually set to a time limit. For example, from 1976 to 1987, MPB games had a hard cap of three and a half hours. It makes a certain amount of sense, doesn't it? You get another third of a game to play, and if neither team can come out on top, neither team really deserves to win. If you think that sounds dumb, believe me, I did too when I first got into NPB. Where's the catharsis? What's the point? But then I watched a game where my team was playing for the tie in the bottom of the 12th, and I finally got it. Sure, it sucks that your team can't win anymore, but they can still keep the other team from winning, and there's no quit from the players whatsoever. On the other hand, if you're a fan of the home team, you can watch their strategy become increasingly chaotic as their opponents whittle down their final few outs, leading to things like a desperate attempt to steal home from second on a wild pitch. Thanks to the thing, MPB shortened their tie rule down to 10 innings this year, which only increased the chaos. It was beautiful to watch. But Gaijin, I hear you cry because you don't know my real name. This is all well and good for the regular season, but what happens in the playoff? Well, I'm glad you asked, because it depends. The CPBL does a sensible thing, no ties in the playoffs. But in KBO and MPB, the tied game is scrapped if it happens within the bounds of a traditional series. I know that sounded a little confusing, but let me explain. The Japan series is typically a best of seven, but if a tie earlier in the series forces a game eight, that game will go until one team wins. This means that, theoretically, a Japan series could go up to 14 games if two teams happen to be absurdly evenly matched. But I'd like to think that after tie number three, the league would just throw its hands in the air and make the teams play every other game in the series to the end. But so far, nothing like that has ever happened. Ties in the Japan series are fairly rare, but not unexpected. The last time we saw one was in game one of the 2018 Japan series between the Hiroshima Carp and the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks. There have even been two ties in a single Japan series before, in 1975 when the Carp played the Hankyu Braves to a tie in game one and game four. But once, and only once, has the Japan series been played to a game eight, 1986. Now, before we get into the series itself, how about a little background of the teams that got us into this fine mess? First, the Seibu Lions. If I had told you a decade prior that the Lions would be gunning for their third Japan series in five years, were the richest team in the league, and played in a state-of-the-art stadium in Tokorozawa, you would have looked at me like I was crazy. Here's why. In 1970, the Lions were playing in Fukuoka and got rocked by what is known as the Black Mist Scandal, where a large group of MPB players from nine of the league's 12 teams were implicated in a Yakuza-run sports betting racket. Half of the Lions' starting rotation was banned for life, including their 23-year-old ace, Masaaki Ikenaga, and the Lions were sold off to a shell company because their previous owner, Fukuoka-based railway company Nishitetsu, wanted nothing to do with them anymore. They played through most of the 70s under Comic League Jeep ownership, sponsored by Taihayo Club, a local golf course developer, and Crown Lighters. They were the joke of MPB, many of their fans had just abandoned them, and they were floating aimlessly. Then along came Yoshiaki Tsutsumi. Tsutsumi was chairman of Seibu Group, a large conglomerate that owned hotels, resorts, department stores, and a railway line. Having spent time in Canada during his youth, he was actually more of a hockey fan but he knew that baseball was the more popular sport in Japan and saw the Lions as a route to both prestige and profit. He would pour money into the team after buying them in 1978 and moving them to Saitama Prefecture, and it would pay dividends. The Lions would make the Japan series three times in four years and won two of them. It took an absolutely stacked Honshin Tigers team to take them down in 1985, and they were looking to learn from that loss. In 86, they sported the Pacific League's best offense, led by 18-year-old rookie first baseman Kazuhiro Kiyohara and 24-year-old future Hall of Fame third baseman Koji Akiyama. Their middle infielders were Hatsuhiko Suji and Pacific League MVP Hiromichi Ishige. Their outfield was a four-man platoon of George Vukovic, Aiji Kanamori, Yoshihiro Nishioka, and Yasuchi Tao. Field General Tsutomo Ito locked things down behind the plate, and veteran DH Shinsuku Katsuhira added a slight power boost to an already powerful lineup. They got on base a lot, could hit to all fields, and led NPB in home runs that year. 
they could also beat you with their legs as they stole the most bases in Pacific League. Pitching-wise, they had Pacific League's best staff, fronted by Hall of Famers Osamu Higashio and Kimiyasu Kudo, as well as Taiwanese sensation Taiyuan Kuo and 20-year-old Hisanobu Watanabe. The latter three could be effective both as starting pitchers and coming out of the bullpen, as Kuo, fresh off pitching a no-hitter the previous year, led the team in saves. This team is young, lean, and hungry to tack on even more success to their already impressive resume. Six Lions started for Pacific League in the All-Star Game, with a further five on the bench, and five Lions were named the Pacific League Best Nine. While none of their players led the league in any major stat, their offense was far more balanced than their fellow Pacific League contenders, the Kintetsu Buffaloes, and their pitching was far better, helping them edge out the Buffaloes by two and a half games. And who was their opponent? Them? Again? Yes, the Hiroshima Carp, entering their fourth Japan Series in seven years. The Carp were the powerhouse team at the turn of the 80s and still had most of the same core that had won them their three championships in 1979, 1980, and 1984. 39-year-old future Hall of Famers Koji Yamamoto and Sachio Kinugasa were still there, although they were both declining. Kinugasa remained an everyday starter to continue his Iron Man streak, but he was hitting just above the Mendoza line. When he did hit, he hit for power though, with a quarter of his hits being home runs. Koji was in a similar camp, while he hadn't declined nearly as much as Kinugasa, and he remained the team's nominal offensive leader, it was clear that his best days were behind him. Shortstop Yoshihiko Takahashi, catcher Mitsuo Tatsukawa, first baseman Takahiko Kobayakawa, and young gun outfielder Kiyoyuki Nagashima rounded out an offense that had seen better days and surely couldn't compete with the high-powered offenses of the Hanshin Tigers or the Yamiuri Giants. So how did they win the Central League pennant? Pitching and defense. Central League MVP and future Hall of Famer Manabu Kitabepu led CL's best staff, picking up his second Sawamura award in the process. He was backed up by fellow Hall of Famer Yutaka Ono, as well as Akihito Kaneishi, Kazuhisa Kawaguchi, and Yoshihisa Shiratake. The numbers just speak for themselves. Closer Tsunemi Sudo was also Central League's best reliever, and the team as a whole was littered with elite defenders. Even with that pitching and defense, the Carp barely snuck into the Japan Series thanks to, well, ties. The Carp's Central League leading 11 ties were enough to give them that 0.003 higher winning percentage that they needed to beat the Yamiuri Giants for the Central League pennant. The MPB team with the most ties? Why, the Seibu Lions of course, with 13. So, a wily group of veterans looking to close their window with a bang led by the strongest rotation in all of MPB face off against a young, hungry, all-conquering offense that is looking to make up for last year's defeat. Cue the fireworks. Game 1 kicked off at Hiroshima Municipal Stadium, Carp Ace Kitabepu against Lions Ace Higashio. All was going well until the second inning, Kitabepu led off the inning by hitting Kiyohara before Vukovic cranked a double to right. Kitabepu then walked tower to load the bases, then catcher Sutomo Ito grounded into a double play, scoring Kiyohara. 1-0 Lion. Kitabepu then got Higashio to pop out to end the inning. Two innings later, Kitabepu faced the same part of the order again. Kiyohara hit a single to center, then Vukovic hit another double to right. Tao then bunted in Kiyohara. 2-0 Lion. Kitabepu would hold down the fort after that, not striking anyone out, but forcing a lot of weak contact and having his team's elite defense tightrope themselves out of danger. Meanwhile, Higashio was dealing. Through eight and a third innings, he'd given up five hits and a walk while striking out seven. He was looking in line for a complete game shutout win, something that would surely destroy the Carp's confidence and throw momentum squarely in the Lions' favor. Then Takihiko Kobayakawa took him deep. Okay, little blow to the ego, but surely Higashio could pull himself together and Koji Yamamoto took him deep too. Well that's some momentum shit. He would be immediately lifted for Watanabe. Things were quiet up until the 13th when Yoshihiro Nishioka hit a single to right. 
Akiyama then walked aboard and it looked like the Lions had a rally going with two outs, but Kiyohara hit a sharp grounder that was fielded easily by Sachio Kinugasa at third. To the bottom of the inning. The Carp also got a two-out rally going, with Takahashi and outfielder Ryo Yamazaki both getting on board with singles. Only for Kobayakawa to strike out. The Lions then looked to get one going in the 14th, when Takanori Okamura, who'd come in to replace Tao, drew a walk. Ito then doubled him over to third. Only for pinch hitter Shinsuku Katahira to pop out to short. And second baseman Hatsuhiko Suji hit a sharp grounder right to Kinagasa again. Masayuki Matsunuma shut down the carp in the bottom of the 14th. And just like that, game one reached its time limit with the teams locked in a 2-2 tie. The carp would go on to win game two in the, thanks to a fourth inning two-run double from Kozo Shota then won Game 3 in Saitama after getting to Taiwan Kuo in the middle innings, then immediately putting up two runs on Watanabe after the Lions pulled within one. Game 4 also went the Carp's way after they got to Watanabe in the ninth inning as he was trying to hold them down. And just like that, we're on to Game 5. So just like that, the Carp looked to sweep the series in Game 5. Once again, Kitabebo and Higashio were both dealing. Through the first nine innings, they had both only given up one run. The Lions got theirs in the third thanks to a rally from the top of the order, and the Carp got theirs thanks to a wild pitch and an error from Higashio. Not wanting to tempt fate after what happened in game one, the Lions lifted Higashio in the ninth and replaced him with Kimiyasu Kudo. The Carp, possibly due to hubris, caused by being up 3-0-1 in the series, elected to have Kitabebu, the best pitcher in the league all year, stay in and win the game for them. But his workload was getting the better of him, and after walking Hatsuhiko Suji to lead off the 12th, and allowing Satomo Ito to advance him to second on a sacrifice bunt, closer Tsunemi Suda was brought in to get them out of the jam. The first person to face him was... Kimiyasu Kudo. Surely the 24-year-old Pacific League pitcher who was only stepping up to the plate for the fourth time in his pro career wouldn't do anything, right? Well, he had hit a double in Game 6 of the 1982 Japan Series, but that was with the bases empty, and the pitcher must have been a scrub, right? Well, actually it was Junichi Dragon's ace Yujiro Miyako. Ah, whatever, that was four years ago. Surely the best closer in Central League could get him out, right? Well, on a 1-0 count, Kudo did this. But wait, I thought this game was in the Lions' home park. Why was Kudo hitting? Shouldn't they have used the DH? The Pacific League adopted it in 1975. What's the deal? As usual, Central League dragging their feet. Despite being adopted universally by the Pacific League, MPB rules stated that both teams had to agree to use the DH in order for it to be used in any game. So far, the only Central League team that had agreed to use a DH was the 1985 Hanshin Tigers one year prior to this. In fact, they used a universal DH for that series. The Tigers agreed to it because their high-powered offense benefited greatly from being able to use a DH in every game. But the Carp had refused the use of a DH at any game in this series, thanks in part to their anemic offense. In fact, using a DH in the Pacific League Park in the Japan series did not become mandatory until 1990. Anyways, back to the story. As the series shifted back to Hiroshima, the Carp looked to shake off the loss while the Lions looked to build on that momentum, and they came out swinging in Game 6. Takuji Ota led off the second inning with what would ultimately be the last home run of his career, followed by another leadoff home run from Kiyohara in the fourth. Despite Kiyoki Nagashima cranking a dinger of his own to lead off the fifth, the team failed to rally around him, and Kudo shut them down with his arm instead of his bat this time. The Lions win 3-1. Game 7 will be more of the same, with an RBI single in the first off the bat of Kiyohara, and a two-run double off the bat of Akiyama in the sixth. Once again, a Nagashima home run was all the carp could muster, and they fell 3-1 again. So, on to the whole point of this video. Game 8. 
Now, Game 8 had a lot riding on it for obvious reasons. If the Carp won, they could stave off immense embarrassment, win one last championship with their old core, and they could become the first team since the O Nagashima Giants of 1973 to win a Japan series without a single foreign player on their roster. For the Lions, it was about redemption. They had fought tooth and nail to get to this point, and they were not going down without a fight. Win this game, and they'd cap off a redemption arc for the ages, pulling off the first reverse sweep in Japan series history since they'd done it to the Giants in 1958. Win this game, and there would be no stopping them. They'd be invincible. Akihito Kaneishi was on the bump for the Carp, facing off against Higashio. Things would remain quiet until the third inning, when Shota hit a single to center. And then Tatsukawa would bunt him over to second. Trouble for Higashio? You'd think that, but the next guy up was Kaneishi. Surely there was only so much he could do, uh, he put the ball over the left field wall. Well, I guess the moral of the story is never doubt a pitcher. Higashio had finished the inning, but that would be it for him. He, all he could do was sit and watch. Kaneishi, on the other hand, was holding down the fort, not pitching out of his mind, but good enough to hold the line scoreless through five innings. Then in the sixth, it all hit the fan all thanks to a few familiar faces. Kiyohara led off the inning with a single to center, and Ota hit a grounder to short. Unfortunately, Takahashi, awesome, all year defensively, completely airmailed the throw to Kobayakawa, and they could not turn two. Into the batter's box stepped Koji Akiyama. <laughs> いや、センターが左中間、いっぱいのところに入ったか入ったか入ったホームラン。秋山同点ホームラン。左中間1番を深いところに飛んだ秋山同点ツーランホームラン。2対2。実回生の一発が出ました。ご覧のように中外で秋